Yeah, there's no easy way to introduce this next story. The headline kind of speaks for itself, but literally, there was an event in Philadelphia recently where undercover police officers in plain clothes, in an unmarked police officer, this is so this is someone that looks like a regular human being, shot an innocent, mentally disabled man for asking for a quarter. Uh, like the video here is absolutely shocking. It, we're going to play a little bit of, bit of it. We're not going to play the actual gunshot. We're going to play up right before that. We're not going to show any graphic footage here. Uh, so you guys know that, but we want to show it and break this all down because what the police say and what actually the video shows is contradicting itself. But this definitely sparks a larger discussion and a larger debate that we want to have on here on this channel. A lot of people are invoking race. We want to talk about that in a little bit. We want to talk about also the latest development elements with Eric Gardner but before we stray off into that area Jason this video I mean holy cow it's it's there's no way of explaining it it's, it's absolutely crazy um to see this happen and there and I don't see any justification for it and I know the police are officially saying that there is some kind of justification uh there isn't there isn't at all here so, you know, just so everybody knows, we don't know what the officer's name is. It hasn't been released. We've only uh, uh, heard from the police captain. If you can see, this is a crowded Philly street. This is a one-way. This is a drag where you have cars parked on both sides. And it's not uncommon for somebody to be walking down the street on the side and begging for money on the driver's side. It happens all the time in major cities, especially this one. So I'm just going to play up until the point we can because um, the captain said that, you know, he makes an excuse that I think is completely unacceptable. So let's just watch this and see what the people think. I right, pause it there. All right, that that second car, uh, of course, is where the police officer was headed. But as you can see, man's walking down the street. He usually does this all the time. He's known for being in the neighborhood. There's other videos uh, that people who know him are speaking out. We should play a little bit of those videos, too. But as you can see, he's not running. He's not jumping out of nowhere, which the police are claiming. Uh, he's not trying to startle anyone. He's asking for change he's asking for loose change walking down the street uh pretty much with his hand out not running not causing any panic not causing any major moves here uh should we play a little bit of that clip of the person who knows him because this is again a 28 year old who now is in critical condition in the hospital after being shot his name was joel johnson uh and this is this is an egregious case to say the least here yeah absolutely and again if you look at this this is actually i believe his niece uh, talking about him. You know, he's got mental issues and everybody in the neighborhood knew him. And, and remember, to be startled, he's coming up driver's side facing the cars. He's not even approaching from behind. Everybody can see this guy approaching. At this corner all the time? Every day he comes here. Everybody around his neighborhood knows him just for asking for change. And if you ask people out here, they'll tell you he don't bother nobody. So what are the questions you're asking today? Why did this happen over asking for change? That's my question. I have nothing more to say here. Really That's emotional. a good question. Yeah. That's an important question to ask here. And and again, I'll, you know, we should know more about this officer, his record, uh, if he's connected to any other instances, because there's no way to justify this. I mean, he shot him through the window. He didn't even open the window. He shot him through the window uh, because allegedly he got startled and uh, startled. And this man jumped out of nowhere. He didn't jump out of nowhere. You're clearly seeing the footage that he did not jump out of nowhere. He's walking calmly down the street asking for change and uh, to get shot like that in cold blood. Uh, it's, it's just hard to fathom that, that, you know, things like this do happen. And again, he approached from the driver's side. He was obviously passing several cars before that. I'm not sure what this officer was doing, but, you know, the local media is actually covering this pretty fairly. We're not seeing it, uh, getting the national media attention. I think that this deserves, especially with this man being mentally handicapped. But let's play some of this. With our developing news here, an undercover po Philadelphia police detective sitting in traffic shot at a man who came up on the car without warning. That officer initially thought the man was armed. We have just learned new details on that in the last 15 minutes. So let's get action news reporter Catherine Scott, who is live at Temple Hospital with the new information here. Catherine. 
Matt, the police commissioner did just provide an update, and he did confirm that this man did not have a weapon, though the detective thought he did. The detective thought he was going to get carjacked. Uh, that's why he pulled his weapon and opened fire. But according to the commissioner, they did not find a weapon. They don't plan to. Um, but this investigation continues. They continue to talk to witnesses. There is surveillance video that they are reviewing. Uh, but that man was taken here to Temple University Hospital in critical condition. He is expected to survive. Here's what Commissioner Ross says not too long ago. It's not automatically an issue of whether there's a weapon or not. And I know for some people they think that's the way it should be. Obviously, it's the first thing we look for. But I mean, I'm always going to be very candid with you when I know there's not one. You know, so I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you know, we haven't found one. Uh, we don't expect to find one. This is being honest. You know, police say the detective's window was rolled up when the detective fired through the glass. Family members say it was 28 year old Joel Johnson who was panhandling. He's known to panhandle in the neighborhood. They say he has special needs and is known to ask for change. This happened around 850 last night in Kensington on the 3400 block of G Street. The seven year veteran of the force was on duty traveling back to his headquarters at East Detectives from a crime scene. The detective was in an unmarked vehicle in plain clothes. He was stopped in traffic when the commissioner says Johnson apparently approached with his arms extended. The commissioner says the officer thought he was being carjacked and pulled his weapon and opened fire through the glass of the driver's side window. Johnson's family is stunned. Why does he deserve this? He stays to himself. So that was the, the excerpt right there that we'd already seen. So there you go. At least they're, they're being fair and the commissioner is not saying, hey, you know, we're going to find a weapon. It seems like Hopefully, this guy is, A, first of all, going to be suspended. <laughs> Let's start there. Then fired. And then I think, you know, he should be charged with attempted murder. Just because somebody walks up. Can you imagine someone walking up to your car, Luke, and your window is closed and you just opened fire on them in the middle of the street? Pretty sure well, you would be charged with attempted murder if you didn't kill them. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting uh, that, you know, a lot of the topic around the subject is he didn't have a weapon. He did, uh, Yeah, of course, he didn't have a weapon. Let's talk about the other issues here that are surrounding this uh, bigger case here. Uh, and of course, this officer, I mean, I, I would say he doesn't even deserve to be on desk duty. Uh, whether there's, there's going to be charges here or not, there's going to be more investigations. And I hope they, they test this guy for any substances or abuse of substances, because that could be one of the scenarios here. Now, a lot of the media is playing up a lot of the race stuff. They're saying black man shot. Yes, he was a, a man of color. We don't know who the officer is. The officer could be a man of color, too. And a lot of people I'm seeing the reactions here are being already uh, evoked emotionally based off racial terms. Again, let's just wait to find out who the officer is. We should have more information about him. We should have more information about his record, first of all, uh, before jumping to conclusions and to see if he was on any substances. There needs to be a full investigation because we can't allow something like this to happen. And there needs to be more accountability. And it does look like the police department in Philadelphia is taking it seriously uh, and there are being very honest and open about it uh, in this particular instant of saying hey there was no gun because as we know there's been the other instances where charges have been inflated have been made up there's been evidence planted uh, many times and uh, officers have been caught uh, in the United States doing that sometimes. And this is what we're also finding out is happening with uh, the Eric Gardner case. As we have new uh, court proceedings and we are finding out that the officer in the Eric Gardner case, the G Eric Gardner case was a man who was choked to death here in New York City for selling Lucy cigarettes, for selling individual cigarettes. Uh, Eric Gardner died and there's a trial with uh, the police officers involved in uh, the choking uh, and killing of this man. And now we are we're having one of the NYPD officers involved in this incident saying that he inflated charges against Eric Gardner uh, to, of course, justify uh, some of the video, some of the graphic insane video that we saw coming out from that entire case. And he pretty much filled out arresting papers when he was literally in the ambulance with uh, Gardner dying, saying that there was supposedly some felony tax charge that would require prosecution to prove that he sold 10,000 untaxed cigarettes. And again, this is just absolutely insane. If you see what happened with the Eric Gardner case, uh, that there's no way justifying that. Uh, there's no way that that, that should be a case uh, that does uh, deserve a lot of heavy scrutiny. 
uh, by the general public and definitely an overreaction and overreach and over abuse of power uh, by the NYPD in this particular case, which which is only going to get more empowered with uh, statists here and, and local representatives trying to literally pass a law where you're going to get now accosted by police officers for simply walking with a cell phone down the street. Yes, the city wants to fine you for texting and walking. Uh, to me, this is just an instant of instance of society gone mad. Uh, and uh, yeah, n- not a good sign at all, to say the least. Well, you know, to go back to the Garner case, um, it is pretty despicable that he was inflating these charges as Garner was dead. Uh, If you read the article, he actually says, oh, we thought he was playing possum. And there was no reason to really even approach Garner uh, to put him in the chokehold to begin with and then to take his life when he said, I can't breathe when several men were on top of him. Yeah, it was a big guy, but he wasn't getting violent with them. He didn't shove or push anybody. Uh, He wasn't really resisting anything, and he shouldn't have been approached in the first place. And one of the main things I want to talk about there is that was about police brutality, and his family knew it was about police brutality. When they were baited uh, by people like Al Sharpton, they refused to take that bait. And they said, look, this isn't race specific. This is out of control police officers, and they'll do this to anybody uh, that they feel they have authority over. And it doesn't matter what the color of their skin is. And that's the truth of the matter. And uh, again, that's why we're not really, you know, that's why we don't think that race is an issue with this. uh, Man, I think Luke's right. You know, this guy should be tested for subsidies. Was he paranoid? He's coming off a crime scene. He's in plain clothes. To fire a firearm through well, a Well, Jason, I'm not window. saying race was or was not involved. I'm saying we don't know yet. Yeah, we still don't I'm know saying. the identity of the police officer because it could be a Hispanic or African-American. It could be a person of color. That could be an officer, which there's a majority of uh, in places like Philadelphia. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not saying it can or cannot be, but the fact that the media is jumping on this and, and, and you know putting it in there, we should be careful. Uh, yeah, uh, even if he's a I'm white saying. guy, it doesn't mean it's racist to me. You know, Again, let's see what the guy's record is, number one, uh, with abuses of anybody. And again, discharging a firearm through a rolled up window is something out of like an emergency or a movie. So I really hope that, you know, this case gets followed on. I hope it's responsibly talked about in the national media. But Luke, as we've seen too many times in these uh, police cases we cover, it's almost never covered. Well, this is why it's important to have a critical eye on this. This is why it's important to look at this uh, as objectively as we can and understand, uh, you know, this is an emotional issue and we can't let emotion get the best of us. We have to do our best to understand what happened to make sure that it doesn't happen again. And sadly, let's be honest here. There are some officers that are good, but there is an epidemic of them being above the law, uh, of them getting away with horrible crimes and and, and them doing that is only going to incentivize more of those crimes from happening. Um, And again, uh, many people think that, you know, laws are meant to protect you. Laws are there for you. Again, people need to understand here, we're living uh, in a place where legally on the books, the police, especially here in New York City, legally a court uh, issued and the New York City Police Department argued have no legal duty or right to protect you. You're on your own. And there's been many instances that I even know of personally where police officers are saying, I'm not going to help that person. I'm not risking my uh, butt uh, for this person. And we have to understand this is a reality. This is something that does happen. There are officers who are very brave and heroic and are are doing good things. There are some of those officers and they don't deserve to be lumped in with uh, a lot of the bad apples out there. And there's a lot of bad apples and it's time to start calling them out. Uh, And again, this is why I bring up the latest kind of texting and walking uh, law that they're trying to pass here in New York City, because it's only going to escalate these sorts of situations and allow them, uh, you know, officers have carte blanche to make up so many charges against you um, here in New York City that, that, you know, this creates a situation where they have more and more power over individuals. Um, I would argue that that's something we need less of. I would argue that we need more civil liberties, more privacies, less intrusive government trying to, of course, stop you, harass you, and intimidate you for simply using a cell phone, texting, and walking. It's it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous to the way society is moving forward, and we really have to rearrange our mental processes on how we view things of what is acceptable and what is not acceptable, and it starts with understanding, hey, uh, question everything uh and this gardner case uh is something to really really consider when it comes to these stupid 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 asinine laws and legalities and how the state approaches it with enforcement uh that enforcement 
does deserve some scrutiny, in my opinion. But that's just what I think. What do you think? Let me know uh, in the comment section below your thoughts on this. Is there anything we said that you think is incorrect? Is there anything you we said that resonates with you more that we should uh, talk about more in this larger discussion? Let us know. You guys are a very important part of this conversation, and we hope to keep it going in the comment section below. Jason, uh, that's all I have to say. Do you want to say anything else from here? I don't know. I'm good. All right, so stay tuned for more here on We Are Change Org. Again, uh, sign up on our newsletter if you go to We Are Change Org forward slash. Uh, we'll just no, just We Are Change Org. Let's go to We Are Change Org. Uh, Jason, go on the screen uh, in the top right hand corner. Uh, sign up on our email list. It's the best and and one of the few ways that we could actually get in contact with you. Again, subscribers don't matter. Uh, the news feed, the recommendations don't matter. It's all curated, and uh, it definitely doesn't involve real critical information. So let's go to We Are Change Org, sign up on our email list to stay in contact with us. Stay tuned for more here on WeAreChange.org.